Hello, and welcome back to our playthrough of Planescape Torment. Done. Alright, let's go check out what's in this back room. This once functional door is now nailed shut and barred on the side to protect against thieves. Okay, is this it? Well, that was a pointless door. Moving on. Alright, so what are we going to do now? Um, I think we go help Seb Ty get her revenge. Done. I wish I could give the Nameless One a ranged weapon. Let's stop in the tattoo parlor first. Hello, Fel. You see a Davis, but something about it strikes you as odd. It has the same shock of white hair, the same greenish cast to, the, to its skin, the same pair of goat horns, and then you suddenly realize this one is walking on the ground, not floating. For some reason, it makes you uneasy. Dakon, can you translate for me? Ask him who he is. As you're about to ask, you suddenly realize you already know the Davis' name. His name is Fell. As if in response, Davis inclines its head slightly, and a lone symbol appears above its head. It's a, it's, it is blurry at first, then resolves into a light oval with a black lightning bolt through it. What did he say, Dakon? He is known as Fell. I feel like I know you, Fell. Bell bows reverently, and a stream of symbols swirl about his head, rotating clockwise, then counterclockwise. It takes you a moment to translate. This is the first time, and not the first time, you have come to this place. What did he say? He has split his speech with a contradiction. Dakon pauses for a moment, his black eyes swimming across the symbols. He says, is this the first time you have come to him? He says that this is not the first time you have come to him. Does he know who I am? Another series of symbols materializes quickly and sharply into focus above Fell's head. The translation comes to you as quickly and sharply as the symbol of themselves. And as if you have translated the exact same string many times before. Yes, but I'm not permitted to tell your story. Why not? Updated my journal. For a moment, there is no response from Fell, then a stream of rebooses appear, as if trickling out of the Fell's mind. My apologies, I cannot. I cannot change the nature of a man. You can't explain why, but the last sentence sends you a crawling sends a crawling sensation through your body. So apparently, I could translate this myself. Uh, I had another question. We don't need to, con to read the con stuff. We already translated it. What lies beyond the curtain, Fell? A caravan train of symbols slowly materialize around Fell, one by one. It is my gallery. Your discarded skins are my canvas. I admire you. I am saddened for you. Is pity? Another caravan of symbols forms around Fell, this time forming a circle. The mark of torment lies upon your flesh. Tragedies and loss have built themselves upon it. Like stones upon a foundation, you have endured great pain. What does he mean? A long string of rebuses appear above the fell's head, then surrounds him his arms like manacles. I admire you because you have never surrendered to the weight of losses, despite the fact their chains hang on you still. Go on. Those losses blanket this life and all of your past ones. You shed lives like a molting serpent. You are exploring an 
the infinite paths of life. Did he say anything else? Mm. A long string of rebooses appear above the fell set, then falls suddenly to the floor, streaming out behind him like a shadow. Take with you this warning. Each of your lives casts a shadow on existence. You must travel to a place where these shadows have gone mad and regrets have scarred the earth. I see. Does he say anything else? A brief series of paper thin rebooses appear above an orderly row of orderly row next to fell and vanish into glowing motes. Do not sign anything. Very well. Uh, do you feel complete? Truth? In fact, ever since I woke up from in the mortuary, I feel like something's missing. Something inside. You were strong. Keep faith and you shall become whole again. I'll try. I had more questions. Uh, does he know how I died? Shadows. Anyway, Fel does not respond for a moment, then slowly, menacingly, three symbols materialize above his head, each of them casting a long shadow. Shadows? Three symbols swirl about each other, each leaving a faint black misty trail about them. They take on a ragged edge, like teeth and talons, and multiply. Where there were three, there is nine. Nine becomes twenty-seven, until the room is swarming of shadows. Many shadows, they stream from the darkness, swarmed you, then left you to die. Uh, what is this place? This is where I tattoo color and life upon flesh and bone. Can I see what tattoos you have available? There we go. Oof, nothing we can afford. There's quite a few, though. Tattoo of the Restless Dead. Uh, recognize your if it's calm, the Restless Dead of the Mausoleum. You may draw upon their gratitude and bless yourself or your companions. Oh, it's bless. Okay. This one to luck. This one to charisma. Okay. Plus one Thacko. Plus one damage with all attacks. Alright. Well, we can't sell anything here, then, huh? Alright. Alright. Can I go here? Go past the curtains made of my skin. Human skin has been stretched across the wooden frames. These skins are covered with tattoos. I'm gone. Aha, here we go. Starved dog barking thug. So we have help Septai get her revenge. I ran to a strange woman, Septai, by the Dustman Memorial outside the mortuary. She was mourning the death of her three sisters who have been attacked by a group of chaos men called the Star Starved Dogs Barking. She asked me to kill three of their numbers to avenge the death of her sisters, and I agreed. She said the sisters were attacked a few blocks directly south of the mortuary. Alright. Let's kick some ass. This wild-eyed man is hunched over, barking and howling at the top of his lungs. Beneath his thick, matted hair, you make a series of make out a series of strange tattoos. They run the range from screaming faces to bizarre geometric shapes to what appear to be lines of verse. He is almost naked, but the dirt covering the dirt and filth covering him gives a semblance of modesty. Greetings. The man whirls on you and gives you a low growl. He draws the, out the growl for a few seconds and starts barking violently at you. And 
the distance, you can hear answering barks. Snarl back and bare your teeth. If this is how you want to die... Oh, wait, he starts barking... The man's barking ends with a snarl, and he leaves at you. If this is how you want to die, Wolfman... I'm gone. Same thing. Greetings. Snarl. Alright, and kill him. I'm gone. I'm gone. Damsel in distress. I'll help you in a moment. I need one more of these barking, barking dog guys. Thug wants peace. Done. Good is done. Alright, let's go help right. this damsel in distress. I think we should have completed that. I'm gone. Can I help you? You see a pretty young woman, her hair is in disarray, and the lotus of her dress is torn. She looks about for desperation and then notices you. Greetings. She runs up to you and grabs your arm. You notice the front of her dress is stained with blood. Help me, Cutter. Please. They're killing my sister. She begs and tugs your arm. I'll help you. Take me to her. A look of relief washes over her face. She tugs at your arm. This way, Cutter. Oh, wait a minute. You're going to lead me to a trap. This feels off. First of all, you're calling me Cutter. And you're leading me to a dark one. Ah, son of a bitch. Alright, woman. You done done it. Surprised that my spell didn't, didn't do anything to these guys, though. All right, let's put blindness on this guy, and you two get on him. Save versus spell. Damn it, he saved. A flash. Right. I don't know if I got out of the camera or not. Now we gotta go deal with this chick that lured me into an ambush. You, my dear, are gonna regret that. Oh! Oh! Usable by Mort. Her teeth? I forgot. Oh, you know what else I forgot to look at? 
my eye. Don't want to part with that. This is your eye. It doesn't seem okay. Well, we put a, a different eyeball in. Alright, anyway, whatever. Here you go, Mort. One to three piercing. Proficiency fists. Don't ask. That's awesome. Just don't ask. Just roll with it. Damn it. Alright. That's great. Hey. 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 You examine Ingress's teeth. You can't shake their resemblance to ivory bugs. You get the feeling that they're looking at you unexpectedly. I want you to become a magical weapon. The teeth rattle about wildly and then settle down. After a brief moment, they begin to emit a soft magical glow. Oh, that's awesome. Yes! Mort's got a plus one weapon now. Fantastic. Oh, you gain new options. So we can do that more than once. Fantastic. Alright, where are you, bitch? Where did you run off to? I am not done with you. Go, woman. She didn't run all the way down here, right? Or can you not kill her? Did she just disappear? Oh, if she got away, I'm going to be very upset. Oh, man, I think she got away. Let's talk to Morns of the Trees real quick. Uh, Morns of the Trees... Smiles wildly upon seeing you. Ah, my friend, you've returned. Something you wished of me? No, I wanted to ask Dakon to help you. What? One finds your request most intriguing. This is Dakon. Trees in the hive, like cities in limbo. They would stand as a testament to the will of the people, not to bow to which that would surround and devour them. To take what has been thrust upon them or left behind and make good of it. I too will care for the trees. There you go. Thank you. Any changes in the trees yet? Ah ha! Yes, friend. There's there has been. It's so slight, but you can barely see it. That you can barely see it. But look, fresh sap from the trunk and a handful of new buds. It's only a matter of time. And I thank you again for giving me hope once more. You're welcome. Come on, where did she go? Uh, well, there are some thugs. We'll beat on them. Pick out our aggression. I'm tired of this running shit. Daggers. They're All only right. worth one one copper. Oh man, it feels so bad that she got away.
Alright, let's get back to Sebtai. You again. The woman's face turns to you, her lips peeling back in a snarl. Have you news for Septai? I found the starved dogs barking and pinned three of them in the dead book. Updated my journal. The powers be not blind in justice to this day. The woman reaches into her spider-like hair, draws forth a copper earring. Here you are. A pretty bit of, a pretty bit it should fetch. Tis worthy, tis worth 33 coppers at least, I'm sure. It belonged to one of my sisters, but she won't be needing it anymore. Thank you. Alright, we'll let the Lin Lin run around for a little bit. Alright, I just put some people in the dead book. Can we... Do any more? We cannot. Very name, none for today. Alright. Done. Okay, that's another one down. Okay, we're not going to be able to do anything until we get to the upper wards. We need to deliver the box to Braskin. Alright. <clears throat> Alright, come here, Lin Lin. Um, pet him. Pick him up. Done. Hey, we're being watched, Chief. Just look natural. Uh, casual. Done. Let's sell some of our stuff. He just won't buy some of this crap. for that ring. Okay, so for a second I thought that each character was getting different prices. Alright, so we're up to 250. Heart Charm, what do you do? Heals 27 hit points. Okay. Done. Alright, we will go ahead and end it here and pick it up in the next one. Seems like a good place to stop, so. Thank you very much. Oh, excuse me. Well, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope to see you on the next one.